I am now streaming live on YouTube and Instagram for the first time ever. This was such an audible. This was not a part of the plan today, but I am so spontaneous that this is what occurred. So we are going to talk about iron today. That is the topic for the lecture, talking about iron fluorine versus iron oxide. If you're on the Instagram, go ahead and follow over to the YouTube so that you can actually see the PowerPoint presentation. And however many people do follow, come in here to the live, I'm just gonna direct you guys to the YouTube channel. So I'm gonna try to start and share my screen. So uh, give me a second. Okay. So we should be live right now on YouTube. However, I love you guys so much that I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to actually do this whole chemistry class lecture all over again. So make sure that you are um, watching on the YouTube or you watch your playback so that you can actually see the slides. So again, we are back in chemistry class. Please make sure you take out your notes, pen and pad, tablet, or however you want to document this wonderful information, because today we are talking about iron, the most important essential, essential mineral. Let's get into it and let's do it. I'm going to try and invite some more people onto this Instagram um, live, so give me one second to tell people that I'm alive and so they can come through and participate, okay? I want all the eyes I possibly can get to come on over here to this YouTube subscription. Uh, Trying to get more people to come on into the room. Give me a second. Because I'm going to do this for a second time around. I'm going to need, I'm going to need some more eyes up in here. Okay. And I promise you we will get started momentarily. Uh, hey, Day Day, what's up? I actually am having people who are joining the Instagram Live come on over to the YouTube channel where you guys can actually see the presentation that I have for you guys today on iron, or iron flooring versus iron oxide. So go on over to the YouTube channel right now, please, and go ahead and watch that live because you're not going to be able to see the actual presentation on the Instagram platform. Hello, hello, hello. So everyone, again, sorry for the delay. I had technical difficulties. This is my second time around recording this live. I'm actually live right now on YouTube. So please come over to the YouTube channel and go ahead and follow me there like share and subscribe where we're going to start talking about iron right now so if you're on here go ahead and go come over to the youtube channel please all right so i'm going to go ahead and get started make sure you share this so iron let's get into it the element the mineral that you see above fe indicates iron on the periodic table and that's what we're going to be talking about today so iron is the most essential mineral, okay? Very important to the body. So what is its function? What's the function of iron? It defends the body against free radicals. Those are unpaired electrons. Don't worry exactly what that is. If that's too chemical, too nerdy for you, just know that it defends the body against free radicals. We've talked about what um, actually can defend the body as far as free radicals and antioxidants, but we will go into that a little bit later in the, the lecture. It makes red blood cells that carry oxygen from lungs throughout the body. 
and iron also conveys oxygen to the brain. So iron is the most magnetic mineral. It's naturally occurring. It attracts other minerals and elements. That magnetism is caused by the motion of electric charges. So every substance is made of um, teeny units called atoms. Each atom has electrons, particles that carry electric charges. Electrons carry negative charges. Iron has 26 electrons per atom. So if you're looking at the screen and you see the graphic above, you see how iron is depicted on the periodic table. Fe is the symbol. It goes, talks about the atomic number, atomic weight. All of that is not necessary for you to know. What you really need to know, Fe equals iron, iron. Hey, come on in and join the YouTube channel. Go over to the YouTube so that you can actually see the presentation and the notes. So, iron has 26 electrons per atom and it's magnetic. That's what you need to know about iron. The special um, magical powers of iron, if I would say so, is that it's magnetic. Okay? That's what you need to know. That's the takeaway message right there. And getting into a little bit more chemistry, hello, 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 getting into a little bit more chemistry of iron, um, when an atom loses or gains an electron, the atom is said to be electrically charged. And now it's going to be ionized, it's going to be in an ionized state. And why it being electrical is so important to the human body is because the human body, we are electrical. We are electrical beings. We talk about walking, we're talking about our heart working, that's all electricity. So it's very important to note that iron is very important. It's very electrical and magnetic. That's takeaway from these two sides thus far. So iron being electric or electrical, it's, it's in an ionized or ionic state. There are a few iron compounds that make them ionic, but the two most common that we're going to talk about today is ferrous iron, which is Fe3+, and ferric iron, which is Fe2+. Iron is a strong electrical field of ions that makes them strong. Oh, I'm sorry. Strong electrical field of ions make them strongly attracted to other atoms and molecules. Like I said before, iron is very, very magnetic. So it attracts to other um, elements and minerals, one in particular being oxygen. So Fe2 plus attracts to O2 negative. So it's the positive and the negative that's going to attract to each other. It also attracts to other elements as well, but Oxygen, like we said, iron conveys oxygen to the brain. So I just want to make sure I point out that that um, chemical affinity between iron and oxygen. So there are several types of iron. We have heme iron and we have non-heme iron. Heme iron comes from meat, pork, lamb, red meat, poultry, and seafood. That accounts for approximately 10% intake but approximately 25% of it is absorbed in the body. So that means that your person is not eating a lot of meat, pork, lamb, red meat, poultry, and seafood, but when they, when they ever they do eat it or intake it, the absorption of iron is at 25% rate. Then we come to the non-heme iron. That comes from plants. Now what Dr. Sabi, excuse me, indicates is iron fluorine. That derives from plants. That accounts for 90% uh, daily intake, but approximately 17% of it is absorbed. So in contrast from heme to non-heme iron, heme comes from meat and seafood, and then we're going to have non-heme iron that comes from plants. So we have heme iron, non-heme iron, okay? Heme iron, you eat less of it, but more absorb. Non-heme iron, you eat more of it, but less absorb. Okay? Then we have another form. Very, very important to know is iron oxide. Iron oxide derives from rock. It is what steel is made of. Iron oxide comes in the form of supplements as ferrous sulfate, also known as ferrous salts. And a nerdy fact, you know, I got to give you a nerdy fact every now and then is that when iron reacts with water and oxygen, it's going to equate to rust. That's the chemical reaction that's going to occur. If you ever use a cast iron skillet, you uh, the iron reacting with water and oxygen, you're going to see rust start to form. That's exactly what's happening. That's a chemical reaction. 
Now, the other types of iron that we talked about in the previous slide, where iron is in its ionic state, meaning it's electrical, is ferric iron, which is Fe3 plus, that comes from food, and ferrous iron, which is Fe2 plus. So when we intake the ferric iron, it has to be metabolized and converted into the body into Fe2 plus state. What does all that mean? Iron coming from food is a meat specifically is well, well absorbed than the one coming from plant. However, it doesn't mean that you should get your, your iron sources from meat. I'm just here to give you um, some scientific basis and then we'll later on talk about where you should be getting your sources from. So falsehood, on Mad Scientist Monday or Mythbusters Monday, or sign seekers, we talked about, I actually posted this on my Instagram and my Facebook. I said that meats such as red meat, pork, lamb, fish, or poultry are best sources for iron. Now falsehood, eating meat such as red meat is linked to colon cancer. Pork or lamb are linked to heart disease. Fish are, are farm raised, a lot of it is being farm raised, and they're even genetically modified. So if you're eating fish, I would be wary of that as well. Um, uh, a brand or a type of fish that is genetically modified will be the Atlantic salmon. That's one that you can know for sure. All meats and seafood contribute to uric acid up in the body which is equates to inflammation. If you want to know, well, what does that exactly mean as far as uric acid buildup in the body? What, what is something I could point to as an example? That example would be gout. You ever know someone dealing with gout? Uh, they have a uric acid buildup in the body, meaning that they have uh, composites that are built up in the body. And that can be very painful from what I hear. So for a vegan or vegetarian, Vegan or vegetarian? You've been to the doctor. You've heard that. Oh, you're vegan or you're vegetarian. Then you um, you actually need to eat more red meat. But how can you tell somebody who's a vegan or a vegetarian to eat more red meat if that's not a part of their diet? I, I just find that to be very, very illogical. So let's talk about it. Let's get to it. You don't have to eat meat or to consume iron supplements over the counter or prescribed to get. Uh, a good source of iron to get your iron stores up or increase. You actually can double or triple your iron rich sources from plants. Okay. So as we talked about um, today in topic of discussion, heme iron to non-heme iron, that non-heme iron is going to be what you get from plants. So you can double or triple that uh, intake or consumption to make sure you're increasing the iron stores that you're going to get from that and make sure that we know that absorption is not really good from the plant-based iron-rich sources, but you can double or triple that to make sure that you're getting enough for adequate intake. Can increase non-heme absorption of iron by coupling it with plant-based vitamin C. Well, what's plant-based vitamin C that I can use? We've talked about this before in chemistry class, but I'm going to give you some specific examples as I always do. Citrus fruits, Dark green leafy vegetables, bell peppers, melons, strawberries, oh, squash, winter squash. What you should not make the mistake of doing if you are taking any type of iron supplementation. This, I'm going to read you a quote specifically from NIH. This is, I'm not making this up. I did not, this is not for me. Okay, this is not a health and erotic statement. This is not a Brittany Tillman statement. But however, it does make a lot of sense. Hey, welcome on in here, Jahi. Um, if you are watching now, I will ask for you to go over to the YouTube channel if you can so that you can actually see the actual presentation. You can see the notes. However, if you choose to stay here, you won't see the notes, but have at it. I like you, I like you have you here, whatever way I can. So, cold supplementation of ferrous salts with vitamin C. The ferrous salts is the iron supplement. With vitamin C, exacerbates oxidative stress. Don't worry about what that means in the gastrointestinal tract, meaning your GI tract, leading to, leading to ulceration in healthy individuals. Exacerbation of chronic GI or gastrointestinal inflammatory disease can lead to cancer. So cold supplementation, when you're, that means when you're taking iron supplements and vitamin C, 
they do not mix well, okay? You don't want to do that. They can cause ulceration and can cause to lead to inflammatory diseases and can lead to cancer. So you don't want to do that. Greetings, greetings. Don't want to do that. However, you can have non-heme absorption, which is from their plant-based sources, and you can have that with plant-based vitamin C to increase your absorption, okay? So some more, let's get some more into supplementation and fortification. For all of those who just joined me today, we are talking about iron and um, we're talking about iron fluorine versus iron oxide. So you want to make sure you're sticking with me. If you want to know anything about iron, you want to know about supplementation. So uh, iron supplementation is routinely recommended by physicians, but it's less absorbed than iron from food. However, even though it's routinely recommended, it's routinely recommended to at-risk populations. When I say at-risk populations, these are populations that are at risk for having low iron stores that can contribute to anemia or even iron deficiency or iron deficiency anemias or any type of iron deficiency disease. Those at-risk populations are pregnant women, infants, and young children. Now, where can we find fortified iron? If you want to know where you can find it at, here you go. Fortified and infant formula. That's a no-no. I don't know. Um, a lot of people that are giving their infants or babies infant formula, if you are, that is your choice. I would recommend against that. The best choice would be the would be breast milk, but I understand that a lot of women. Um, go through complications in that regard. However, fortified and infant formula, enriched flour, and in grain products such as breads and cereals. Iron supplementation can be very, very dangerous. Large doses of iron, such as ferrous sulfate, ferrous salts, can cause GI stress, constipation, diarrhea, and vomiting. Ingestion of iron containing supplements is the leading cause of accidental poisoning in children, can cause liver damage. A serious toxicity, you can see rapid heartbeat, weak pulse, dizziness, shock, and confusion. I don't know about you, but that's basically telling me that I would want to be taking an iron supplementation. So if you, if you happen to be taking iron supplementation, I just uh, warn you to listen <laughs> to what I'm saying today and make some changes. So let's talk about iron supplementation specifically. The labeling can be very confusing. So if you're looking on YouTube right now, you should be seeing, hopefully seeing, uh, the ferrous sulfate figure one picture, then you have a figure two picture, which is courtesy of consumersafety.org and Walmart. So don't copyright me, please. This is strictly for education purposes. So in figure one, the front label states that each tablet contains 65 milligrams of, of 65 milligrams. Now, if you see on the second label, the second bottle is figure two says 325 milligrams. But what they don't tell you is there's a difference between the higher number and the lower number. There will be two numbers. There will be a high number, which is the chemical form. And then there's a second number, which is the elemental form. So let's go back to figure one. So figure one, it contains 65 milligrams. Now, nowhere on that label does it note that each 65 milligram tablet is equal to 325 milligrams of ferrous sulfate. So if you pick up this iron supplementation and your doctor tells you uh, you need to take 325 milligrams of iron sulfate, the person is going to think who sees this at 65 milligrams say, okay, well, I need 325. Well, that's 65 times five. And really what you only need is one, milli one tablet of 65 milligrams because it equals to 325 milligrams of ferrous sulfate. That can be a little confusing, but stick with me. So what you will want to know from your doctor is how much elements of iron you actually need and that elements of iron is more likely just gonna be that one pill of the lower number that's actually listed on the iron supplementation. Moving on, what depletes iron from our bodies? 
and acid uh, GI disease such as ulcers or colitis, anemia, uh, blood loss, or lots of blood loss, heavy menstruation for women, calcium, soda, cow's milk, chocolate, tea, the tannins and tea, I have astrocytes and coffee. So the tannins and tea actually do deplete iron stores. And how does that occur? Why does that occur? What am I actually talking about? So there are teas specifically such as black tea and green tea. They have the highest amount of tannins, right? So you, want, you would be concerned if you drink a lot of black tea, you drink a lot of green tea. Also, white tea and oolong tea have tannins. Um, there, there is not a lot of evidence to prove that herbal tea, uh, tannins and herbal tea affect the depletion of iron. So if you're... If you're in taking any of these um, iron depleters, such as that I just named, that can be a contributor to why your iron stores are low, if they are low. Now, moving on to the next slide, I have a picture up here I'm going to read from about from Eat to Live, Not to Die, which is an image from Hidden Facts on Health and Nutrition. Eat to live, not to die. They are also uh, Sabians, which are Dr. Sabian followers. And I'm going to let you know exactly what this says, and I'm going to break you down some sources that you could use for iron. So there are many types of anemias. There is general anemia. We have sickle cell anemia, thalassemia, leukemia, and hypoglycemia. Excuse me. And sickle cell is the extreme deprivation of iron fluorine. We talked about iron fluorine coming from plants, which causes up to 20 different diseases to manifest. So let's talk about sickle cell specifically. When the blood plasma has been deprived of iron fluorine, it has been invaded by acidic um, products or items such as blood, starch, and dairy, blood coming from meat. Because this, the blood plasma breaks down into a sickle, which is allowing oxygen and iron to escape. Now, remember we discussed that iron is very magnetic and it conveys oxygen, so it attracts very good to oxygen. So those are two uh, minerals that are going to escape. Welcome to everyone's coming in the room right now. So those are two minerals that are going to escape, iron and oxygen escape. So the patient, they can become weak, uh, becoming weak and having a lack of energy is a symptom of low iron stores. Also, as well as lack of train of thought. So if you've ever been around someone who has low iron, who um, get very cold very quickly, they have fuzzy thinking, their train of thought is really off, they're weak don't have a great deal of energy. Those are symptoms of iron deprivation or low iron stores. So if you have a sickle cell anemia, you will also suffer from a secondary disease called thalassemia. In the case of leukemia, the blood is very acidic, okay? You can heal yourselves from these types of diseases. You don't have to actually take the iron supplementation. You can actually heal yourselves from anemias. You can consume a lot of iron fluorine, which is what you get from plants. And then you can fast. That's one way also as well. Because when you're in a fasting stage, there isn't a lot of food that needs to be uh, digested and metabolized. So your body has time to actually heal itself. So what are some iron rich source, sources that you can intake or consume? Glad you asked. Dandelion greens are rich in iron. Elderberry is also rich in iron. Callaloo, known as amaranth greens. Purslane, kale, soursop leaf or soursop fruit. That, that soursop fruit is so tasty. I'm telling you, it's so good. Sarsaparilla, burdock root. Sarsaparilla is the herb that's highest in iron. Callaloo and soursop leaf or fruit can most likely in the United States be found in Caribbean markets. At least that's where I found it. You can also um, order them online. But as far as getting them from another country, as far as soursop, that can kind of be a little tricky because U.S. Customs plays a part in that. Where can you get it from soursop in this area? Uh, you can get soursop leaf 
from Red Apple on uh, New Hampshire Avenue located in Tacoma Park. And uh, the actual fruit is very hard to find, but you would find it in your Caribbean markets. And actually Red Apple on New Hampshire Avenue in Tacoma Park also does have sour sop, uh, depending upon the time of the year, the season. I like to get it and actually um, store it in my freezer. Another one I think is Robert's Farm. They're located, Robert's Farm or Robert's Stand, they're located in Florida. So I get it shipped. Okay, other iron fluorine sources. Green vegetables also provide chlorophyll. That's very, very important. So chlorophyll to the plant is what blood is to the body. So you can imagine its importance, right? Chlorophyll cleanses the blood, provides oxygen to the blood, and removes inflammation, and provides antioxidants. We talked about antioxidants. They actually defend against free radicals, and that's actually what iron does as well. Other sources, nettle, bladder rack, Irish sea moss. You want to make sure you're not getting farm-raised Irish sea moss, which is a lot of that what's being sold on the market. The Irish sea moss you want strictly comes specifically from the ocean. It's not farm raised, okay? It's not tampered with. Nori seaweed, dulce, wakami, kelp, hops, they also have um, chlorophyll in it. Moving on to other sources, hemp seeds, legumes, dry raisins, prunes, other herbs, yellow dock, dandelion root, blue vervain, chaparral, bugleweed. And this came from eat to live, not to die, okay? So we have been discussing iron and the difference between iron fluorine versus iron oxide. We talked about also the different forms of iron. We talked about it's important being very electrical, being very magnetic, how it conveys oxygen to the brain. We talked about the sources. We even got into some nerdy, geeky stuff about um, how iron creates rust reacting to water and oxygen. So I'm glad to have everyone that I have on the live and in Instagram live here in class today for this lecture. I would like to see you next week. So please have your ass in chemistry class. Remember to like, share, subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate it. I love you guys. If you have any questions, please, please, please let me know. If you do have any questions, you can go ahead and ask them right now, and we can um, talk about that right now. I'm here for it. I have low iron. Okay, Nadia Bell. If you're still watching, Nadia, thank you so much. Uh, what kind of foods do you eat? Or what type of food uh, behavior or dietary patterns do you subscribe to? Shadow facts. I see that. Let me know if you have any questions pertaining to iron while I'm still here. Go ahead and drop a question in here. And welcome to everyone who's coming in right now. Thank you. Thank you, Tamika. Very informative. Thank you so much. Uh, anyone have any questions? And Nadi, if you're still watching the live YouTube, uh, just go ahead and post that. If I'm off air, go ahead and post a comment below. And then I will uh, get back to you. Or you can follow me on Instagram at health neurotics and DM me or email me at health, neuro health neurotics at gmail.com. Did you share supplements for R? Yes, I did talk about supplementation. So you want to rear away from the over the counter supplementation like the pills you would get from your Rite Aids or your Walmarts or your CVS or Walgreens or even prescribed from a doctor because that that supplement contains iron oxide. That's the form of iron that comes from rock. It's not going to assimilate with our body. So that is lacking uh, what we would call in chemistry, or biochemistry, a carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, which is essential to life. So it doesn't have that. So you don't want to do that. And even taking um, supplementation is going to have a negative reaction with uh, vitamin C. So I would not recommend that. If you want to supplement or get more iron, you want to do it from your plant-based sources, okay? I hope that answers your question, Tamika. From plant-based sources, 
and we went over those and those will also be listed on the YouTube. I should have been sharing the screen. I believe you you were able to see that. I'll be able to see that in the playback. But if you um, have any other questions regarding iron, I'm here for it. Excuse me, this is free consultation. Take it while you have it because I don't offer it that often. Carissa, I see you're in the house. Steph, I see you were in the house. I think still I'll watch the playback. Of course, thank you so much. Uh, any other questions in the room? All right, now. Going once, going twice. Hey, Russ, do you have any questions that you would like to put out here and ask? Chlorophyll, do you recommend the plant based crops? Of course, yes, 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 I do recommend the plant-based crops. I don't recommend going to the store and getting like uh, those chlorophyll supplements either. I actually don't even know what they're made of or where they come from. I'm always gonna recommend the most natural source to get the chlorophyll or any type of mineral, okay, or element. So I'm gonna try and share this screen again so that uh, you guys can see it because you're, Okay, let's see. What type of vegetables are high in iron? Let me go ahead and put that back up here on the screen just for anybody who's coming into, into the YouTube that can see. I named a few, Russ. So I said that you want to get your green vegetables or your dark green leafy vegetables. That's going to contain chlorophyll. It's going to take iron as well. Nettle, that's the herb that you can use. Uh, bladder rack, that's another one. Irish sea moss, not farm raised. Nori seaweed, hemp seeds, legumes, dried raisins, prunes, uh, yellow dock, dandelion root, blue vervain, chaparral, bugleweed, uh, dandelion greens, elderberry, callaloo, amaranth greens, kale, soursop leaf or soursop fruit to name a few. So when you watch the playback, you will see all this information as well. Okay, so. Alrighty, so thank you guys for attending chemistry class today. I'm gonna go ahead and check out uh, where can we get authentic sea moss from? Oh, great question. I do not sell sea moss. You know, someone asked me about selling sea moss recently. Maybe I should hop into that game. However, I do have some connects to some a sea moss that comes from Jamaica. There's also Crush Foster. If you follow Crush Foster over at Alkaline Eclectic, or I think it's Beyond Alkaline, he actually sells sea moss that comes from Honduras. I can point you to some directions if you DM me. Because if you're going into the store, I would rather you know that the difference between the two, the farm raised and natural. So DM me. I like to purchase. Yeah, I need to give me some too. I'm gonna I'm gonna order me some from probably Crush Foster over at Beyond Alkaline. Hey everyone coming on in. Sorry that you um you 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 missed the all the information that we covered earlier. You're gonna have to go to the YouTube and watch the playback. But thank you for coming. Uh, class is actually ending right now. Unless someone has something that is just on their heart and they have to ask me about iron, I will stick around for a couple more minutes. But if not, I'm going to go ahead and log off. So if you do have a question, feel free to drop that on in here immediately. Do so now or forever hold your breath and your peace. All righty. So no questions. Thank you guys so much. And this wraps up uh, another session, another week of chemistry class. We'll be talking about iron. Next week, I do not know exactly what I'm talking about, but you have to tune in to figure that out. Peace.